It's 2024. In the past year, we've seen some incredible feats of construction, from desert skyscrapers and Japanese super tools to an underwater mega tunnel and a new dam being built in front of a dam to save a dam. Dam! But the next year looks set to be even more dramatic, with massive Spanish stadiums, Australian railways, Canadian super tools, and a Parisian Olympic opening ceremony that'll be unlike any we've ever seen. It's the world's greatest industry that's set to pull off all of these amazing feats and more over the next 12 months. Here are the 10 most exciting construction projects completing in 2024. Ooh la la! 2024 will undoubtedly go down as the year of the French. Now, don't worry, we are going to get onto other projects around the world, but this country has more spots than any other on our list this year, and there's one big fat reason for that. The City of Lights is getting ready to shine. The Paris Olympics. The Paris Olympics. Paris stages its third Olympiad. The Olympic Games. Normally, that would mean excess. Think epic new stadiums and lavish mega projects. But this is an Olympics unlike any other. Having built up a bit of a reputation for its cost, and the estimated $12.9 billion that the pandemic hit Tokyo Games ran to, Olympic officials have been wanting to rebrand, cut down on waste, and generally create a cleaner event. One way to do that is by reusing old buildings, and 95% of the venues for this year's games will be held either in existing or temporary structures. Many of the venues that are already standing are being refurbished and modernised where needed, while temporary ones are going to be constructed around the city and dismantled once the games are over, like this spectacular arena built at the foot of the Eiffel Tower. Not only is this less wasteful, but it means events can be held in different and interesting parts of the city. The only permanent new venue will be the Aquatic Center, an impressive looking venue that's been built largely with sustainably sourced mass timber. It'll be reused after the Olympics for international and national competitions. The 5,000 square meter roof will also be covered with photovoltaic panels, making it one of France's largest urban solar farms, supplying all the energy the building will need. Inside, the smaller than usual space has been carefully calibrated to maintain views for spectators while reducing the size of the room that needs to be heated. The ambition to be clean and green has stretched to other parts of the French capital too, most notably its river. Massive treatment facilities have been constructed in a bid to make the Seine swimmable, something which has not been possible for more than a hundred years. That's because French officials banned swimmers from the river back in 1923 due to metal and facial bacteria in the water. The enormous cleanup will cost over 1.5 billion US dollars and involves what is basically a giant rainwater holding tank measuring 50 meters wide and 34 meters deep, storing up to 46 million liters of water before it's transported via a tunnel to a treatment facility. That clean water will then be pumped back into the Seine. The goal is for swimming trials to be hosted here like they were in the 1900 Olympics. The Paris opening ceremony will also take place on the river in a spectacular display that promises to be the largest Olympic opening in history, finishing up right under the Eiffel Tower. Now, before we leave the French capital, there is one other major project that we have to mention. One of the great symbols of Paris and all of Western civilization, it is still standing this morning after a fire that nearly destroyed it. The restoration of Notre Dame has been a long and complicated process. The devastating fire of 2019 destroyed much of the interior and the iconic wooden spire. Rebuilding Europe's most visited landmark to its former glory is no mean feat. It's cost more than 900 million US dollars and has run into several major setbacks already. Miraculously, most of the cathedral will be open by the end of 2024, meeting President Emmanuel Macron's original deadline. While it will take a little longer to complete the interiors, much of the exterior should be complete, including the famous spire.
Located on the southern part of the island nation, Kaohsiung has a population of more than 2.7 million people, making it the third largest in the country. But don't let that fool you. This economic powerhouse is home to Taiwan's largest port and the 13th busiest port in the entire world. The bustling city is currently going through a massive upgrade of its metro, and this new station sits in the very heart of the mega project. It'll be a true transportation hub, linking train, metro, local and intercity bus services, taxi and bike routes. There's also a 9.75 km railway tunnel, which includes no fewer than seven new subterranean stations. A sweeping canopy over the 8.5 hectare site means it also doubles as a new year-round public park for the city. Rising 458 meters into the sky, this will be the tallest new building to complete in 2024, and it will rank among the top 20 tallest skyscrapers in the world. Eight of the 10 tallest buildings completing in 2024 are going to be in China. The other two are in Dubai and Cairo. Despite the country's recent tall skyscraper ban and the downfall of property giant Evergrande, China is still very much leading the world in high-rise construction. 73 of the 100 tallest buildings currently being built are in China. The International Land Sea Center is a 98-story part of an 11-tower master plan designed by Combe Pedersen Fox that will completely overhaul Chongqing's downtown. Built on the banks of the Yangtze River, one of the major train lines in the city will actually pass directly through the building at its base. This dazzling light display marked the super tall towers topping out back in 2022. Australia's largest metro is getting a much-needed expansion. The 30-kilometre new line burrows under Sydney Harbour and through to new CBD stations that are due to open in 2024. The project has been called arguably the most transformative piece of transport since the Harbour Bridge. At a cost of 20 billion US dollars, the new network is one of the largest suburban rail projects in the world, rivaling even the Grand Paris Express. There we go, mentioning the French again. And that's all just the start. By 2030, Sydney will have 113 kilometres of new metro rail and some 46 new stations. Now, if all of this is inspiring you and you're wondering what it takes to be an engineer on a huge project like Taiwan's new station or the Sydney metro expansion, then know that a knowledge of STEM subjects is pretty key to begin with. But if you normally find these difficult to figure out, there's a new way to learn that's fun, easy and free to start. This week's video sponsor, Brilliance, has courses that easily break down complex concepts into quick lessons that are simple to follow and will get your cogs turning in no time. It's a great way to visualize problems and solutions, like understanding formulas for scaling up shapes. Take calculus in a nutshell, for example. With this course, you won't just learn what it is, you'll discover how to use it too. But if calculus sounds like it would have you going around in circles, Brilliance has thousands of lessons on subject areas like probability and computer science, all of which are ideal for leveling up your career or setting yourself a new challenge. To give it a whirl, try a free 30-day offer by visiting brilliant.org forward slash the B1M or by clicking the link in the description. The first 200 people to sign up will receive a 20% discount off their annual subscription. Now, Let's get back to this year's biggest projects. Next, we're heading over to Toronto, where a frantic race to build Canada's new tallest building is heading towards the final straight. Strict zoning laws and a rising population mean the city is seeing a massive skyscraper boom and will soon overtake Chicago as the urban area with the second most skyscrapers in North America. Designed by Foster & Partners, the One will rise 306 metres above the city to become Canada's first super tall building, offering apartments, commercial space and a hotel when it completes. The building's extreme height for its location has resulted in a number of engineering challenges, most notably with taming the wind. With so many tall buildings now springing up across Toronto, the wind being blown down to street level has become a major issue. To get around this, cutaways have been created in the building's mechanical floors to help disrupt wind flow, stabilise the building and prevent air currents blowing down to pedestrians below. From one skyscraper boom to another, Frankfurt skyline is set to get dramatically taller over the next few years. 
There are currently more than 50 high-rises either being built or planned in this city. Leading the charge is 4 Frankfurt, a mega-development of, you guessed it, 4 towers which is due to finish in 2024. The tallest new building in the cluster will rise 233 metres above street level. For decades, the city centre and the banking district have been severed, but this development will reconnect them, creating a new mixed-use neighbourhood in the process. The site will contain offices, apartments, a hotel, shops and restaurants, literally acting as its own little city within a city. I visited the site in 2023 to see its progress, and the towers are shaping up nicely. So Kuala Lumpur kind of has a thing for sky bridges. This massive complex is going up right next to the iconic Petronas Towers, a world-famous skyscraper duo linked by what's probably the world's most famous sky bridge. Raising the bar, well Oxley Towers has two of these sky-high connections, each with their own rooftop garden. The sprawling three-tower structure will contain nearly 2 million square metres of floor space, five times that of the nearby Petronas complex, and its tallest tower will rise to a super-tall height of 338 metres. Inside is yet another veritable city within a city. Think the usual mix of apartments, offices, commercial spaces, restaurants, shops… you get the idea. The Malaysian capital's skyscraper boom also shows no signs of slowing down. Oxley Towers will join the recently completed Exchange Tower and the now tallest building in the city and second tallest building in the world, Medeca 118. No, it's not an enormous sandwich toaster. This is the $1 billion new home of Spanish football legends Real Madrid. The Santiago Bernabeu has undergone an incredible transformation to become the self-declared best stadium in the world. This is what it looked like just a few years ago when it was already one of Europe's most iconic venues. The refurb has included, most obviously, a massive wraparound facade made up of strips of steel which are going to be lit up at night and have images and videos projected onto them. The stadium's capacity has been raised from around 81,000 to 85,000 and a retractable roof and new terraces have been added. There's also an amazing retractable pitch that can be segmented and stored below ground, cleverly stacked to avoid the metro line running under the pitch. While gigs happen in the stadium, the grass below ground is kept in optimal conditions and even mown by the grounds team. This video was sponsored by Brilliant. You can learn more about that at the link below. Don't forget that you can keep track of all these projects and more in 2024 over on the World's Best Construction Podcast, available right now wherever you get your podcasts. And as always guys, if you enjoyed this video and you want the world's best construction content in your feed this year, then make your best decision of 2024 so far and subscribe to the B1M.